it's it's different for me, you know, having the ability to skate down the street and then Chris to be able to get 12 foot of air, you know, on top of the half pipe. That's totally different thing. So uh, that so wasn't mean, Chris, you? Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. I wish. I wish. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Normally, we choose a classic movie from the 80s, 90s, or early 2000s and dissect it with a modern eye to see if it still moves us the way it does as kids, but not today. Not today. On this episode, we are interviewing Shane McDermott, the actor who played Mitchell Guzan in the 1993 movie, movie Airborne. We think you're going to love it, so sit back and enjoy today's episode. Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with The Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. We're pretty darn excited about today's episode. I'll explain to you why we're doing this shortly, but first we got to introduce the team. My name is Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two of the worst surfers I've ever seen, Sean Pryor and AJ Vance. How the heck are you? I've never tried it, and that is why I'm probably the worst. Yeah. Have you tr- have you tried? It? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, AJ. Uh, yeah, because well, I, it's the reason he's seen me is because it's just I surf on my bed. Uh, ah, yeah. and <laughs> I'm just I'm way. not good at that, <laughs> so I fall off. I fall off easily doing that. It's the motion of the ocean and, and everything. And I'm, apparently, I'm not good at it. Yeah. Surfing on it. Maybe if it was a waterbed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh see, that's, that's where I way. messed up. Oh. This Tempur-Pedic. Mm. Well, this is the first time I believe we've. <laughs> yeah, there you, you go. You get to pick your number. I think this is the first th- time we've done something like this where we've done like a like an interview as a bonus episode. Yeah. I mean, we had Bird on, but he was part of the episode. But we felt like doing Airborne. If if you know this movie, this is going to be an interview you're going to want to tune into. If yeah. if this was anyone else interviewing him, I would listen to this. And it was an absolute pleasure to interview the guy. I mean, first of all, beautiful man. Yeah, we yeah. just got done talking about it, and we probably will continue to talk about it the rest of the night. But. Uh, <laughs> You can you Good can Lord. look for our secret secret episode where we find out his beauty routine, how much gluten he eats, and his <laughs> sleep schedule. So <laughs> we didn't and get what his <laughs> Tempur-Pedic number is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're really going to enjoy it. We're going to start it here soon. But before we dive in, don't forget that your tasks for being a Confused Breakfast member basically made this episode possible. The people that joined our Patreon at patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast made this episode and this interview possible. If you join and you're on the Patreon, not only do you get to support the show, you get tons of amazing perks like voting on upcoming episodes, weekly bonus audio, and now we have something new. If you join the Patreon at the top tier level... We're asking everyone at that level to give their modern day rating of the movies we do. And so when that, you know at that weekly bonus audio episode, we're going to get in there and we're going to say, "Well, let's see how we compared. Are you ready for this?" So, we talked about Starship Troopers. Yeah. We gave it a 7.24 modern day. Our Patreon members disagreed. Oh. They said 7.86. They thought we were too low on that. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, you know, it's not up to us individually, so I do kind of agree that it should be a little higher. Okay. So I'm with them. But on The Fugitive, uh, we gave it a 7.89. Guess what they gave it? 7.5. 7.9. Whoa. Like Whoa. We're, point, we're .01 off. We are spot on in complete and utter perfection, you know, like just melded together with our Sometimes Patreon. That sounds more like out. us. That sounds more like us. Yeah, yeah, spot on, perfect, exactly. So if you want to get in on the fun, you want to vote on upcoming, uh, uh, you know, upcoming movies, you want a weekly bonus audio, so much more. You want to tell your modern day ratings, support the show. Patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. Boys, what do you say we jump into this interview? Oh, I say yeah. we do it. Here we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy to introduce today's guest. We have Shane McDermott on the show. Shane, thanks so much for being on the podcast. It's an honor to have you. Oh, great to be here. Great to be here. Well, I'm going to start it off um, 30 years ago, almost. We're coming up in September here. 30 years ago, you starred in a movie called Airborne. Can you honestly believe that? Like, I'm sure some days it feels like a year ago. Some days it probably feels like 50. What, what is it? What is it like to look back 30 years on that movie experience? 
I'm amazed. I mean, I, you know, I think back and especially as we come close to the, the anniversary, uh, you know, 30 year anniversary coming, I think this September, I, yeah, I'm blown away that it's been, it's been so, so long. Uh, but also what I love so much is that, you know, the, it's, it's a testament to the movie uh, that still people are talking about it. And, uh, and I love that. I love that Airborne, you know, I still get emails uh, from fans of the movie and they tell me how much they, how much the movie influenced them in their lives. And, and me too, because I mean, you know, when I shot the movie, I was 16 years old, uh, which is kind of at the same age that a lot of the emails that I get from Whoa. fans, um, I was, you know, just a little bit older than them. Uh, so, and talk about it, it was a major influence in my life. Uh, it was a huge rollerblader at the time. So, uh, so no, it's 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 amazing that it's been thirty years and wonderful uh, that everybody or that people are start talk, still talking about it. So that's great, man. I, I was kind of wondering and curious of how you kind of fell into acting. Acting? Did you fall into it? Did you kind of uh, just kind of get an audition for something? Did someone see you on the street or something like that? And then talk about uh, how you uh, became in uh, in into uh, Airborne. How how the audition process and everything was. I, it started early. I, I, you know, when when I was young, I was a gymnast um, and was pretty aggressive in gymnastics. Um, and it's a it's an interesting story. I ended up uh, I uh, we were I was in gym one day and I got into uh, a little. I wanted to do something my coach didn't want me to do, uh, and uh, I did it anyway. And he kicked me out of class. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at that time, I uh, I was watching TV and I saw this commercial for this, this company called uh, Faces International. And I guess they would uh, take photos of you and put it in this book. And, uh, you know, all the casting directors would take a look at the book and you'd be famous. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I called them up. I mean, I was, what, I think 10 years old at the time. And I set up an appointment and, uh, and ended up going in uh, to, uh, to meet the folks. And of course, they wanted me in, in the book. Uh, but the thing that was great is they gave me a, a photographer who took these photos. And uh, we ended up never getting in the book, but we ended up sending the photos up to uh, uh, modeling agencies in New York. Uh, and I ended up uh, moving up to New York City from Texas uh, to, to model as a kid. And that's actually how it started. Mm. Uh, at the age of 10, uh, my whole family moved up to New York uh, and I spent my days uh, running around New York City. <laughs> uh, going to different modeling jobs and so forth. And, uh, and then once you kind of, you know, the progression was that uh, once you move out of modeling, you move into commercials and then TV shows and then movies. And that's actually how I got, you know, into Airborne. I had actually been in the business for, for some time. So that's awesome. With, with, uh, with Airborne, you know, it seems like uh especially you know we do a lot of research on the show we try to find dig in as deep as we can and and it seems like uh you know i guess my big question is kind of what brought you out of it if if you know what what was the drive maybe out of it or did you was it was a conscious thing you had other other ambitions or uh sticking with yeah or? i i guess i mean uh, because it was you know from pretty much 10 to probably about 20 26, I was, especially when I was kind of younger and 16 all the way through about 20, I was, I was, I was working quite a bit. Uh, so I did, uh, you know, a bunch of commercials, did Swans Crossing, which was mm -hmm. uh, a really fun show to do. Um, Sarah Michelle Geller was on it. Uh, Brittany, uh, Brittany, um, there's a whole list of just like great actors and actresses that were all in Swans Crossing. Uh, and then I did Airborne and then I did all my children for a couple years. Uh, and then moved back and forth between, you know, New York and L.A. Uh, but I think I started just getting, uh, I, I was looking for something else. I was looking for another challenge. And, I, and then, funny enough, art became, you know, my passion and my focus. Uh, so as, as I got a little bold, bit older, I started focusing more and more on art and creativity and, you know, just, um, you know, building cool things and I uh, was just less interested in the acting. So, so I am definitely going to be one of those. If, if I had known your email address before I started the show, I would have been one of those kids that would have emailed you and said, man, you changed my life, dude. Like, <laughs> Oh my God. And, and it's funny. Cause I moved, I moved when I was 14, I moved from St. Louis to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, like right to start high school. And yeah. I related with you so much with that character of this, like, 
going from all these people and this life you love to nothing. But here's my question. As someone who's terrible at acting, I'm referring to myself, um, I cannot fathom how someone can be different than who their character is. <laughs> how, how similar were you to Mitchell Guzan at the time of that, of that movie being made? Well, they, it, I was t almost totally the opposite. Oh, really? <laughs> which was which is interesting. Yeah, so good actor. I, you know, I was a, 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 I grew up in New York, and so uh, you know, I was I was a rollerblader, uh, but I would I would call it more of a street skater. So I would skate in the streets in New York, um, but you know, I I grew up in New York. Uh, I did surf a little bit, um, but I would say the the core of Mitchell Guzan is, you know, who 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 I am. And actually, I think that came out of, you know, growing up in Texas. Uh, and so that that core of Mitchell Guzan was there. But, you know, I was I was a New York City kid at the time I got <laughs> casted in Airborne. Uh, so it was, it was a it was a real treat to, um, you know, have that, that two different lifestyles. So did the fact that you had uh, rollerbladed before or street skate, as you referred to it, uh, did yeah. that uh, influence uh, the filmmakers to cast you? Oh, I think it, it was a major factor. I remember whenever I went in for the uh, uh, the, the audition, uh, the director Rob Bowman was there, and and at the time uh, it was uh, uh, I would go to my auditions on rollerblades. Uh, so that's how I'd get, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'd, oh, wow. I'd get from uh, you know Upper West Side down to the Lower East Side, you know, on rollerblades, and I'd uh, skate through the streets, and we did a lot of foolish things like hold onto the back of cars to mm, you know, you know get, get there fast and and so forth. And then of course, when I showed up, you know, I had my rollerblades with me. I pulled them into uh, the actual audition. And uh, and I think that that was a major fact. It was was something that kind of made me a little bit different than maybe some of the other folks that were uh, uh, that, that were auditioning, especially in New York. Uh, oh yeah. So, uh, so and I and I remember when we had you know I think we were on like the third audition. Rob actually said, "Okay, well let's uh, let's go skate." And uh, <laughs> we went out into the streets, and I took him to one of my favorite you know skate spots, and uh, we spent you know an hour and a half just. Uh, you know, uh, skating through, you know, jumping over fountains and downstairs and stuff. So, so I think it was a major factor. Uh, so that was great. Was there a good split? Cause, uh, if I remember correctly reading, um, was it, uh, Chris, Chris Edwards, Edwards? Yeah. uh, he, uh, that uh, he, now he was also, uh, a uh, double for you, uh, in scenes. Yeah. Right. And so, and how much, how much of it, what's, what was the mix there of, of, you know, you as your, as Mitch, you know, uh, or between him and you. Yeah. Yes, well, Chris Edwards at the time was the number one skater in the world. I think I yeah. mean, he was, and we're talking about, I mean, it's, it's different for me, you know, having the ability to skate down the street and then Chris to be able to get <laughs> 12 foot of air you know, on top of the half pipe. That's totally different thing. So, uh, that so wasn't I mean, Chris, you. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Yeah. So, uh, so that was, uh, that, that's, that was the part that, uh, I, I would say, if anything, the the mix between the two of us was that my ability to skate allowed uh, the the movie to look, you know, mm -hmm. consistent, Absolutely. and and that was a big factor. I mean, uh, you know, for me to be able to escape and they had you know the camera you know on me, yeah. and then it to cut to Chris Edwards just doing these amazing <laughs> uh, uh, stunts, uh, it really gave uh, the film um, some credit. So. Well, and then you, and then you have uh, Chris Edwards as as Walt in the movie, who at the end of it we see is just a bumbling skater almost. Skater. <laughs> was he a good sport about that? I have to imagine he was, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was great. I think that you know, in the at the end of the film, I, we did a lot of those those scenes later. Uh, so you know, we filmed the core uh, scenes up front, and I think as we got as we got further into the filming, they started allowing me to participate more. Uh, but by the time we got onto uh, Devil's Backbone, everybody was having so much fun because we were spending oh, the whole day on skates. Yeah, and I yeah. mean, we were just like flying down, you know, roads, and you know, they had closed off, you know, yep. uh, intersections, and uh, you know, and every other day, Chris was doing some other 
amazing stunts. So we'd all kind of line up mm. and watch him, you know, do these crazy stunts. And, uh, and of course he was in there acting with us and, uh, it, it was, it was, it was a great, it was great end for the film. So, so we've, we've been doing this podcast for two and a half years. We focus mainly on eighties, nineties movies. And a lot of times you hear these behind the scenes stories about how a director will purposely keep, uh, like, like two sides of people away from each other to create, a natural tension between them. Did you have, did you have that where the director kept you away from all the bad boys of the movie so that there'd be this general hatred or, or was it a fun, like you guys were all friends on the scene and everybody hung out? So I think, it, I don't think it was the director that kept us apart. It was the, um, uh, the shooting schedule from, from me. Oh, okay. Uh, because the, the thing is, you know, I was up, I was up early. We were shooting all day and going to bed late. And you know, if you actually see, uh, or with, with the movie, it's pretty rare that I was with the group oh, yeah. of other kids. So, you know, most of the scenes that we shot, it was mostly Seth Green, myself, uh, or Brittany and, you know, myself. And, uh, and so what we were, I was kind of separated in that way. It had not, I don't think it, I don't think, although Rob, I, uh, was, was really creative in the way that he would, uh, um, um direct, you know, I, I definitely felt that that could have been something that he would do, but, uh, in, in this case, I don't think that that was it. I was just busy shooting, uh, you know, trying to cram in all those scenes in, <laughs> in like two months. So. Yeah. Did you did you keep any good relationships after that show with any any of the actors or any of the crew or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. For for a while, when I was bouncing back and forth between New York and remember, I was I was young, so I was I was sixteen at the time, um, and I think Seth was the 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 second youngest at nineteen. And then oh, wow. once you kind of went up, yeah, it was kind of like a lot of the other actors were, were, you know, 24, 25, you know, a little bit older, a little bit older at the time. So, and also I was at a, a New York. So when oh, we yeah. finished shooting, I, I went back home. Uh, so mm. back to the city. And so I would fly out every once in a while to do uh, reshoots with Seth. And actually I lived with Seth for, I don't know, maybe about six weeks, wow. uh, which was, which was a lot of fun. I mean, Seth is very talented and, 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 and a lot of fun to hang out with. Uh, but so just bouncing back and forth. Uh, and then also whenever I ended up uh, booking all my children, that was shot out in New York. So New York was home base for me. And I think that that made it kind of hard to kind of keep up with a lot of, because the, the movie was shot or was really put together from uh, LA, you know, most of the, the crew was from LA and, and most of the cast was too. So. So you just mentioned Seth Green. Um, Talk about your relationship with him. I know you said you'd live with him for a little while, but uh, yeah. your guys' on-screen chemistry seems very, very genuine to me. Uh, is that true? Is that in, in real life where you guys good buddies and hanging out? Seth is uh, unbelievable. I mean, he's a very giving uh, uh, guy and an insanely talented uh, uh, actor and, and creator. I mean, he's just very creative. I mean, he's actually he's a cartoonist. Uh, he's an artist. Uh, uh, so, and those were things that I really, I mean, even to this day, I'm, I'm blown away by, uh, you know, um, you know, how talented he is. So, um, and, uh, and we were, we were very close, uh, for me, this was such a new experience. I'd never done this, but Seth grew up in, in, in this. I mean, he, he was working and doing films at, at the age of seven or eight years old. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he was, he was doing a lot of Woody Allen films and, you know, oh, so wow. his experience was amazing because he kind of brought me in and whenever you're coming into an environment that you really have no idea what's going on, you need somebody like Seth. Uh, and it was the, it was a good age uh, difference. Yeah. You know, he's a couple years older than me. He had much more experience. We were shooting all of our scenes together and he was so good that really I, I would just kind of follow him around and try to do <laughs> what he did. And it really did create that uh, a nice um, uh, relationship. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's um, very much so. So he, he uh, or I, I I saw bits and pieces about how he did uh, at least a decent amount of improv. Is that true? I I come back to one scene in particular that, that it's probably obvious of him trying on all the outfits, and you're you're just losing it, and I, it just seems so genuine. I have to imagine that that was was that real? Was <laughs> were your responses that they captured were those real to what he's doing or? Or wearing. <laughs> or wearing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so Seth was always, no matter where you were, whether the camera was on or or whether you were just walking through the hotel lobby or walking down the street, 
he was always uh, making you laugh. Uh, and that was just who he was. He was always kind of trying to think of new fun things to do. Uh, lots of pranks. I mean, everywhere you went, we were, you know, <laughs> never getting into trouble, trouble, but sure. just enough to, <laughs> to really have a good time, you know? So, uh, and that was just who Seth was. So, and I feel like that, that definitely transferred on screen because you would have the script. We all knew the script, uh, but then Seth would just, you know, throw something in just to see how you would react to it, uh, which in a way was great because, of course, you react very naturally. Uh, and, and it was just, you know, part of, you know, his experience. He he really had the ability to come in and improv, but kind of stick to the script and just in, enhance it. And I kind of feel like Jack Black had the, the same ability. I mean, he could just, uh, he, they both Jack and Seth were amazing, both on and off uh, camera. <laughs> I mean, they were just, uh, it, it was it was a whole new level. And for me at that age to kind of like be a part of it was great. So. Yeah. Do, do you think, I mean, because this was the first thing I ever remember seeing Jack Black in, and I'm pretty sure he did a few TV roles and stuff, but did you have any idea of, of a guy like Seth and a guy like Jack on, was there something different about them to where you felt, okay, these guys, these guys probably have something else that will take them to the next level? I absolutely thought that. I mean, the moment that you met, uh, moment you met Seth, and Jack was more, he was more quiet. Yep. Uh, at least when the filming started, he was, he was um, a little quieter. Uh, but the Jack and the other, um, uh, that, that, that whole group, um, uh, you know, Chris Edwards, uh, Chris Edwards and, um, you know, all the, all the skaters, they all kind of hung out in, in the beginning of the film. Um, when we started filming, uh, Jack was a little bit quieter, but you could see throughout <laughs> the filming the 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 group starting to gravitate around Jack. <laughs> I mean, you could just see it, and I mean, and and I mean, it, once he started to open up, I mean, between the the his uh, music ability, yeah, and his just true unbelievable talent to take a scene that's just kind of your ordinary scene and really increase it to a level that made it extraordinary. And that that's a talent that I, we would watch every day. I mean, every time we were and I, and I kind of feel like Seth and you kind of, you know, hit the nail in the head. That's exactly what it was there. You knew by the end of the film, you knew there was something special about both of those guys. Yeah. So. I was wondering about uh, the, the placement of this, this movie, the setting uh, in Cincinnati, Cincinnati is, I, I read a lot that they're super proud of this movie. Like <laughs> yeah. they, they are, they love that, that it was filmed there. Um, and yeah. I know you shot some in Kentucky and, and things like that, but uh, can you recall the motivation uh, by the filmmakers to have it set in Cincinnati? I think it was uh, Bill Appleblaza who was the, uh, the writer. Um, and uh, if I remember correctly, I think that he had a connection to Cincinnati. And so that that's why, uh, he was good friends with the executive producer, uh, Steve uh, uh, McAvity. And um, and I think that that's why Cincinnati, uh, you know, was was the film. And I tell you, we I love Cincinnati. Uh, it was, they were wonderful to us while we were there. And uh, it was almost kind of like for that, that two months. Uh, first of all, I got to know Cincinnati. Uh, and, uh, but it was almost kind of, we, 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 we ran it. You know, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. We always we had access to the streets. Uh, if we were doing a, a, a night scene, the the city would turn on the lights for us to make it, <laughs> um, you know, the the skyline to look more beautiful. And I mean, awesome. that's I mean, that's one of those things. You're just like it was awesome. I mean, it was <laughs> it was it was amazing. So uh, yeah, and so I still I mean I've I've actually taken my boys uh, back uh, to oh, Cincinnati. That's cool. Yeah, just recently, uh, so that we could kind of see the different, uh, you know, places that we shot and everything That's like great. that. So, and I'm excited. I think that uh, the the 30th anniversary is coming up, Are and I'm planning? hoping that I can bring, you know, a, a bunch of Galveston, the whole crew here in Galveston up there, uh, so that we can uh, really enjoy that, uh, uh, in, enjoy it. So, so your boys have obviously seen the movie, then. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what I mean, what is there? I I imagine showing my daughter. In six years, I imagined showing her something that I did when I was 16 on video. And I imagine her just being like, what is this? But you, I mean, you have this movie that people love. What, what was their reaction to seeing it? 
Well, it, my my oldest Davis, uh, we actually showed him the film. I think I'm trying to remember the first time he saw it, but he was young, and he was young enough that he couldn't. He yes. he knew it was me, but he couldn't understand why you know those kids were beating me up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so so you had to kind of explain it to him. But now now we rollerblade together. Oh, so cool. you know, I've just been going through the process of teaching the boys how to rollerblade, uh, and it's been great because now the film it's become one of, or at least, you know, it's, it's, it's a film that they enjoy. They're finally at the age that they can enjoy it. They're rollerbladers. Uh, they love the stunts. Uh, and then I just, I guess I happen to be in it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's, it's been great. So. I always ask just kind of going back, you know, you're going to be able to see it now. Uh, if there's, there's going to be a 30 year anniversary, you said, and, uh, I always try to ask whenever we get this opportunity of a movie, when you first, after it's all shot, it's all done, um, you know, it's fallen into the editor's hands, essentially, and then it comes back out. And I just, I wonder, I always want to ask uh, what your first feelings and initial reactions did. You, well, one, did you get in a, a pre-screening of it at all? Or did you see it on a premiere night? And how did you feel that first time seeing it? How did it come across to you? <laughs> So there was, it's a, it's a pretty funny story. There was a pre-screening um, and uh, Seth Green at, the, at that point, I had been going back to, to LA to do these final shoots. You know, they always, we always had some dubbing that we had to do or different shots. And at the time I, I did have like a hotel room, but you know, it was, you know, I was kind of bored. Uh, so I would always go and hang out with Seth and, um, so uh, it, we, we, Seth and I just happened to be in some mall uh, downtown Los Angeles and somebody walked up uh, a girl and she had kind of a, a pad, um, you know, just a piece of paper saying, hey, we're doing these, you know, screening for this new film that's coming out. And I guess the screenings are put together so that you, you know, they can rate them, you know, to see yeah. how, how an audience reacts to it. And she goes, yeah, it's this new film, you know, starring Seth Green and uh, and Shane McDermott called Airborne. And we <laughs> both looked at each other and were like, no way, really? And, you know, just <laughs> Seth being Seth, he was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we absolutely are going to do this. We need know? to see this. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, of course, we couldn't go, you know, look in the way we were. So we decided we would dr dress up and uh, got into the costume. <laughs> not costume i mean we just you know oh, got into yeah. the different hats and everything like that and uh so anyway we get into line and uh you know full full audience uh all the producers and everybody were in the back you know while the film was kind of going on so we kind of snuck in and just so happens that both seth and i just happen to sit right in the center of the theater i mean just perfect seats like the two middle seats you know perfect distance from the screen not too far back to and uh so and that was the first time I saw the film and I mean, the film was uh, beautifully shot. I, I mean, there, it, it was, it was awesome. I mean, it, it was, it was such an experience to see it on a huge. And so that was, the, that was my first uh, experience. We didn't really have access to the dailies uh, during shooting. So this was really the first chance that I got to see it. And it was, it was, it was great. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, Seth and I both walked up to uh, Steve McAbee, the executive producer, said, hey, Steve. <laughs> said, what the hell are you guys? <laughs> we, gave, we gave it a good rating. Don't worry. <laughs> we gave a good rating. We skewed it a little bit. but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, so you did, you did, looks like you did a couple more TV things after this, the years following, but, oh, but yeah. ne never, did you have offers for movies beyond that? Not so much. Um, I did uh, all my children for a couple of years, and then I did spend. You know, I was I was an actor for a while, uh, and then also I I really loved to travel, uh, so I moved to or I ended up in Europe for a little while, uh, and was kind of bounced around Europe for a while, uh, and then came back to New York, went back to L.A., uh, and then started kind of auditioning again. But L.A. the L.A. auditioning scene is very different from New York. Um, you know it's it's a bit bigger city spread out you know uh so uh, i was used to you know being able to rollerblade from audition to audition and you know there no such thing so uh i so so it was just it was a lot it was different um and then i ended up going back to new york uh looking for a little bit of work because when the film first came out it was not i mean it's been over the years that it's really built up this kind of uh classic following you know and at first when it came out, it I, I don't think it was, re it, it was really as well known 
Um, so, uh, so it was hard. I mean, it was hard to find work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would bounce around, bounce around between auditions and then second jobs. And, uh, and then that's when, you know, I got into art and, uh, uh, and then eventually got into real estate, yep. uh, cause my mother at the time was a broker in New York city. Uh, so then I got my real estate license. Uh, so there's not a job that I haven't, I haven't had. <laughs> I have to imagine uh, the onset um, working with uh, your uh, other cast member, Brittany Powell, um, mm-hmm. that that might be a, a little maybe embarrassing. You can talk about this a little bit. Maybe embarrassing to like be, like kiss somebody on screen <laughs> and like have that kind of relationship because it look it looks great on on film when you guys your guys' chemistry. Um, talk about how that was. Did were you nervous about that? I mean, I know you're a handsome guy, and so I'm sure <laughs> you know it's fine, but. Uh, We'll talk about that a little bit. Was that was that uh, sort of nerve wracking for you, being your first movie? Well, it being the first movie, there are two. two you know, it, it was it was definitely uh, nerve wracking because you know I really kind of I had never experienced it, and it, it, it was uh, a very heavy workload. Um, but I think that in a way, I was young enough that I just didn't know any better. So you know, just at that age, you just kind of barrel into it. You do what people tell you to. Uh, but then also, I think Rob Bowman was a great uh, director, and he knew my youth, and then he was able to use the um, the other a- actors and their talents uh, to to you know anytime I was nervous, he was able to uh, uh, e- either he would help or or bring in the other actors, and they would they would be able to bump me up to you know the level that I needed to be. Uh, and I think at that point we were just you know at that like whenever the scenes with Brittany and stuff like that uh, came up because I think she was, she was older than she me. was four years uh, older than you. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, at, at 16, that's a big deal. Hey man, <laughs> that's a huge deal. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, but you know, I look back on it and funny enough, I, I, I don't, I wasn't nervous about it. Um, and I think that that had a lot to do with uh, Rob's uh, directing style. I mean, he really, um, he, he, he was able to, you know, helped me a lot with that. So then Steve McAvity was also uh, the executive producer was very hands-on. Uh, this was his baby. Uh, he really loved this film. Um, and, uh, and so that was nice. We ended up working a lot together uh, and he was kind of the same way. Yeah. You know, just everybody on set was really helpful. And there's so many people that were so talented. I would just try to copy them and see, <laughs> do what they do. Oh and, yeah. Uh, and it worked out. <laughs> it's a great way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I I gotta say, for, you know, first I just have to say, g- kind of share some of my appreciation for the third act of this of the movie. Um, you know, Devil's Backbone, the downhill. I mean, yeah. I, I yeah. I'll be honest with you, I think it's one of the it's it's such a, an amazingly shot like action, uh, yeah. sp- you know, extreme sports. I, I, I there's there's a lot of movies that try to do this stuff, and I don't know that they, they just don't pull it off like this got pulled off and it, it's really well done. I guess this kind of leads me to the point though, that I can't believe that we haven't read or seen or had an entire list of the injuries that <laughs> would have gone on sure, yeah. in a shot, a shot list like this. Um, especially, I mean, you see some of them and, uh, they hurt you when you come around and you see these shots happen and people going under cars or, <laughs> running into trees um was there a lot of that that happened on set uh or do you was it pretty pretty well managed pretty well tame and uh did did everybody get by okay i i think mostly everybody got by okay and i i think one of the reasons is um so many of the skaters were were professional rollerbladers and i mean you talk about chris edwards being you know just the top in the world and then that whole group uh the u.s rollerblade team uh, they were so talented, you know, it's in, I, in a way I, I used to just be in awe because they just never fell. <laughs> they, and I, you know, me, sure. on the other hand, I fell all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'd say if anybody uh, got the, uh, you know, the most uh, beat up on that film, it may have actually been me. <laughs> may have been you. <laughs> <laughs> so just trying to keep up with the other rollerbladers, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, cause I mean, when we're doing devil's backbone, when once we had finished most of the major shooting, and because I was begging Steve, I was like, "Man, let me get in there. Come on, Coach. Let, <laughs> yeah. you know, let me." Let me. Uh, and he finally said, "Okay, okay, we're gonna let you know you guys shoot as much of the stuff as as, as you can within reason." Uh, but there were just a number of times that we were flying down those mountains, 
and uh, um, or hills and uh, and there were there were there were I wouldn't say so much close calls, but just you know one small slip going you know yep. forty miles an hour and it hurts. <laughs> yeah. So, How yeah. often are you are you recognized at all in daily life? Uh, you know, thirty years later. You know, it's it's rare now, especially with all the uh, the gray and. Uh, I I think I gotta say, man, I think you look almost exactly the same just thirty <laughs> Honestly, years later. You really <laughs> you look fantastic. <laughs> Uh, no, not so much. Uh, not so much these days. It used to, I used to get a lot more, but Galveston's a really small town. And I, uh, once I, I moved here and I got pretty involved in just Galveston, uh, local politics. And, uh, uh, so now it's, it's <laughs> nice that in Galveston, I'm recognized quite, quite a bit, but that's because everybody knows I live here and, uh, you know, everybody down here loves the film. Uh, and so, uh, so it's been nice. Uh, so, you know, a lot of my clients, you know, as I told you with real yeah. estate, they love it. <laughs> that's, that's a thing. Like I, I do a lot of classes with new agents and yeah. telling them to find just some sort of fun icebreaker thing that you can talk about. That's one of the best icebreakers I could think of. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, so. I'm curious. Not so uh, much anymore, but that's why I love stuff like this. I mean, I love talking about airborne and love talking to you guys about it. And, uh, uh and actually it's, it's nice because you guys asking me the questions, makes makes me remember so many of the great stories that we had uh and so much of the of the, of the, of the fun that we had that's so, awesome uh, it's really nice <laughs> i'm kind of curious of um what you're into nowadays like what kind of movies are you are you watching are you watching like the new ones that come out uh do you have time for any of that um or are you just kind of stick into nostalgia kind of stuff what are you watching nowadays well, I'm a little bit all over the place. I love old classic films. I uh, and uh, um, I always have. Uh, I, I, you know, and, and I tell I told you like first of all, and as you guys are are now starting to find out, kids are very time consuming. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we have less and less time to uh, uh, to to watch what we want. But it's interesting because I'm and I end up watching a lot of uh, kid movies that are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh my boys have been into rio recently and you know mm -hmm. they just watch it again and again and again and of course you know all the disney stuff uh which is you know just great and uh, and so you kind of have that element uh which is uh, amazing and i still still uh keep in touch with you know a number of my friends from new york and uh some of the folks from la that are that are writers and they're always telling me to check out this film or that but i tell you you know that the movies that i love are the the classics uh you know, whether it's Lawrence of Arabia or mm. Pulp Fiction, that's pretty much these days, you know, trying to find any time that you can sit back and watch a movie is kind of hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. How about favorite music, favorite band of all time? For me, it's different. It, like the music has to do with whatever I'm doing. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, in every morning I wake up and uh, so, well, <laughs> I, I cook bre breakfast for the boys every morning. Uh, and I love to wake up to good Jack Johnson Cool. It's very, very laid back, uh, easy music. When I run, I listen to Toots and the Maytales. Do you guys know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I love Toots and the Maytales. Yeah. 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 So, and I mean, that has a little bit of, uh, you know, a nice beat to it. I yeah. love to dance. Uh, so, you know, whenever we end up going out to uh, parties or whatever, uh, anything I can dance to, um, you know, so some Michael Jackson, you know, so, <laughs> so that's the way I kind of look at it, uh, you know, just, um, <clears throat> I mean, it's uh, situational. You know, so much great music out there. So I, I want to ask you. I want to ask you about your art because I found an article and I found a link in that article to your website um, yeah. for for your art, and I I'm uh, already a big fan of it. Um, and so I wanted to ask you about that since we're on the on the discussion of passion. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about your art and what it, what inspires you to to do that, and um, and if you could just talk a little bit more on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, it started uh, actually when I was in Europe. It started uh, uh, years ago um, uh, when I was traveling in Spain. I started painting, and uh, and it just was something. It was almost kind of a, a wonderful release, uh, and I uh, fell in love with it. Uh, and uh, and it, but it's not just only paintings that I that I do. I I kind of uh, recently and it, it kind of mixes the real estate with the art. Um, you know, what I'll do is I'll rehab homes and uh, and I'll bring a lot of that creativity from, you know, kind of the painting, which I still paint uh, quite a bit. And actually, these days I do it a lot with the, with the boys. Uh, so it's just kind of a nice activity that we can do. But uh, but honestly, I, I love to build houses. 
Yeah. Uh, so really? I've started tying, you know, taking a lot of the old historic homes, which I love, uh, and then trying to, uh, you know, almost like sculpture, uh, turn them into really cool, uh, fun places. Uh, and so, uh, like this, this, this tiny hat, this guest house that I'm in now, uh, is one of those, it's just a, you know, house that we built and, uh, it had a lot of fun doing it, taking old wood and old windows and, you know, uh, do a lot of mosaic tile work in the bathrooms and, and so forth. So, uh, so anything that, uh, you know, I can create, it's, it's just, you know, it's what I love love to do so do amazing. you have do you actively have a website that does sell things like is that something you'd like to promote at all to send people to to check out your work yeah uh, I, it's uh sf mcdermott uh which is the website i think that uh, you uh must have gone to yeah uh, so it yep. has it has prints and so forth and uh uh, and, and, and so forth, any of the later stuff that I've been doing, I've really been focusing on a lot of the, the, the homes recently, uh, you know, uh, fixing up the homes. So that takes away a little bit from the painting. Um, but, uh, but, um, you know, so that's, uh, but it's, it's, that's the website. You can see a lot of my artwork that I did over the years. And, uh, and if you want to buy a print, uh, go for it. That would be great. I would love, I would love it. Well, so, last awesome. question for you. Uh, sometimes IMDB is not correct in things. IMDB lists your nickname as the Breck boy. Is that correct? Were you ever nicknamed the Breck boy? No, I don't know exactly what that means. Uh, so. <laughs> well, there we go. IMDB. That's where we get most of our information. It proves to be false all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Shane, honestly, uh, for young 14-year-old Mike Schulte here, this is an unbelievable dream come true. It's great to see you. It's great to see that you're doing well. It's great to hear yeah. your story. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about Airborne here. We'll send yeah. you some links. And and we, we if anyone's buying real estate in Galveston, Texas, uh, I think we know your man. Mm -hmm. Look me up. Look me up. I would <laughs> love it. So, uh, no, guys, this has been great. So, uh, a lot of fun talking about the old days and uh, really enjoyed meeting all you guys. And uh and uh thank you awesome real pleasure man great to meet real you real pleasure well hey thanks man well i'll definitely shoot you a few links this is uh this will be a bonus episode that we put out on monday so it'll be next monday uh and then our airborne one will come out this wednesday so i'll shoot you a few links and this will go up on youtube and stuff so uh we, we do you have do you have a TikTok by chance I do not. <laughs> good, good. That is the good answer. Stay, keep it that way. Keep, keep it that way. We'll, we'll. That's kind of how we've developed a lot of our fan bases. You know, that's where the people are, and so we might make a yeah. few fun videos out of this and put them on there. So, if if people start telling you that you're that you're viral on TikTok, you know how that happens. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, maybe I'll I'll put together a TikTok account so I can like what you guys are doing. Oh, there so. you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Just like you and if you can get Seth to do that too, you know, wear disguises, <laughs> change your name on there. That'd be great. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, man. I, we really appreciate you. No, this was great. So, guys, thank you very much. And uh, thanks. Yeah, have a thanks good so one, much, man. Shane. We'll Later, see you. Bye. All right, guys. Okay.